Hey, welcome to Big Picture Monday. My name is Callie Black here with all the context you need to totally rock this week's Come Follow Me readings. This week we are studying Third Nephi chapters 20 through 26. We just get to learn more from Jesus this week. I am so excited. Hey, teachers, if you have a teaching calling at church or you're in a presidency and you teach fairly often, do you know about my teaching courses? I launched Teaching Teens a few months ago um, and it the reception has just been fantastic and I just launched teaching adults like a week ago and so if you teach teens or you teach adults at church I created two separate courses because honestly it's just very different it's different in the way you have to approach it's different with the issues you have to kind of handle with as a teacher but basically what this is is I'm not telling you what to teach in fact I hope I give you good ideas with other content and there's so many other great content creators with you know gospel topics and everything like that and the manual's great but I want to help you a little better how to teach. I'm giving you hard skills. Like here's literally how you ask good discussion questions and here's how you don't do that and how to manage your time wisely and here's how to make the flow of a lesson. Anyways, if you think you're interested in that, check out my courses because I am running an introductory sale on teaching adults. So if you want that course and you teach adults, grab that now. Um, and I'm so excited to just help support any teachers and help you feel way more confident in feeling like you know what to do and you have that bag of tools ready to go to handle anything. So if you're on YouTube, go to the description and click the links there. If you're on Instagram, just click on my name, come follow me study. You'll go to my profile page and you can click on the links there and get that. Okay, let's talk about Jesus though. We are going to learn from Jesus's speaking this week. Last week we were kind of learning by what he did. This week he's just going to talk and we get to listen and it's awesome. Um, we are still on the second day that Jesus is here that we have record of, of course. We're doing our best to piece this timeline together, but we know the first day that was when he first arrived at the temple. He called his 12 disciples. Remember that he administered the sacrament to his disciples who then administered it to the crowd who was there at the temple. Now this was a smaller crowd. We don't know exactly how large, but it was just this first day crowd at the temple there. Keep that in mind. It'll come back in just a second. Um, he did lots of other things that first day, right? He healed the sick. He was with the little children. Lots of great things. Then the second day happened. He ascended into heaven and everyone spread the word and they all gathered to the waters near Bountiful. Now this Again, we don't have exact numbers, but I'm just imagining much larger crowd this time. And Jesus wasn't there at first. In fact, the disciples, these 12 disciples now, just split the crowd up and they taught everything that Jesus had taught them, which I love. Love that so much. Um, but then Jesus did come. There's lots of praying and praising and joy and happiness and all sorts of good stuff. So that's what we studied up until last week. And now Jesus is just going to teach and we get to listen. We get to learn from him. Um, he is going to say just a lot of his own words uh, that we can't find other places. This is like original teachings right here in Third Nephi, which is super cool. He does also quote a couple other prophets. He quotes a little bit of Isaiah and Malachi as well. And before you turn this video off and you're like, you said Isaiah, I'm out for this week. <laughs> I'm not doing this. Please, please, please. These are actually very easy. He only quotes like small verses at a time and they're very familiar Isaiah verses. I promise you, this is not like a lot of the other Isaiah quotes that we necessarily read. Although I, I hope you're feeling more comfortable with those ones too. But this one, this is like easy Isaiah. Now I do want to point out, I want to ask you real quick, did the Nephites already have the teachings of Isaiah? Yes, yes, they did. Lots of other Nephite prophets had already quoted Isaiah. We know that when Nephi and Lehi left Jerusalem, they took records with them, right? They had the brass plates, and we know that Isaiah's teachings were included somewhere within those records um, that Nephi and Lehi brought over. Now, did the Nephites have Malachi's teachings? No, they did not have Malachi's teachings. I know that for us, sometimes we're like, Isaiah, Malachi. Yeah, those are like Old prof old Testament prophet guys, right? Like, sure, you know, they kind of seem the same. But Malachi was actually a prophet 
in Old Testament times, we know all of those prophets were talking about how Jerusalem is going to be destroyed. Jerusalem is going to be destroyed. That's why Nephi and Lehi left, right? They were living in Old Testament times, right around the time of Isaiah, in fact. And he's saying Jerusalem's going to be destroyed, and that's why they got out of there. Well, Jerusalem was eventually conquered and destroyed, and most of the inhabitants, a lot of them at least, were carried away into Babylon. And so while they were in captivity in Babylon, that's where we get some of the scriptures like Daniel... Uh, like Esther. Okay, so these are stories of being in captivity. They're not allowed to be in Jerusalem. They're taken away into Babylon. Well, after a few generations, they were actually allowed back into Jerusalem. And that's when they start to rebuild Jerusalem and they rebuild the temple, right? By the time Jesus comes, Jerusalem's back, right? Like it, it it's there. Malachi was a prophet around this time as they are rebuilding the city and rebuilding the temple. So the Nephites did not have Malachi's teachings. Nephi had already left at that point, so they didn't have these records. So you'll notice when Jesus teaches about Malachi and he quotes Malachi, he says, write this down. Because they don't have this yet. This is new scripture to them. So even though for us, Isaiah and Malachi are pretty close to each other in the Old Testament, they are worlds apart for these Nephites here, okay? I, I just think that's interesting to think about. Okay, let's look at what Jesus is actually teaching. Chapter 20, remember what I told you about the sacrament? Most of this large crowd had not taken the sacrament yet. It was just that smaller group on the first day. And so Jesus administers the sacrament to his 12, and then the 12 administer the sacrament now to the entire group of people that are here gathered at the waters in Bountiful. So now everyone has taken the sacrament and miraculously, Jesus provides all of the bread and wine for this entire group. No one knows where it came from. Jesus then starts to teach. He teaches specifically about the house of Israel. A lot of these teachings are going to feel very Old Testament, very House of Israel, very covenant focused. So just kind of get that brain mindset on of like, what promises are we looking for here as we go through this? And he's going to talk about that. He's going to quote a little bit of Isaiah where Isaiah talks about how a new Jerusalem will be set up. And that's where the gathering of Israel will happen. Um, and he even quotes a little bit of chapter 52, where he talks about the gathering of Israel back to um, the gathering back to Israel. And again, talks about a lot of these really ancient promises about scattering and gathering. And I promise I will remember you. That's a big promise, right? Remembering. Chapter 21, he continues to share some promises and some warnings to the house of Israel um, that people need to remember, both the house of Israel and the Gentiles actually. And he says that when a free people are established in this land, the land where he's in right now, that will be a sign that the gathering of Israel is about to begin. Uh, he reminds them that if you repent, you will be saved and free. And if you do not, you will be in captivity. Uh, and then he quotes Isaiah saying that God will prepare and protect the way to share the gospel. God will make sure that that can always happen. Chapter 22, uh, Jesus quotes all of Isaiah 54, which talks about how God's covenant people have been in captivity because they were not remembering him. Think about what these Nephites have been through too, right? Like so many parallels here but that the Lord will show them mercy in the future. He always fulfills his covenants. He always keeps his promises. And that in the future, their posterity will find peace as well. And then in chapter 23, Jesus kind of finishes with Isaiah. And he tells them, search the words of Isaiah. Keep searching them. Especially these ones I just quoted, but also more as well. And now Jesus is talking to his 12 disciples and he talks to Nephi. Remember, Nephi is serving as the high priest, the prophet, the record keeper, right? He is this direct descendant of this the line that started with um, Alma. Alma the elder, Alma the younger, going all the way down here. Now we have Nephi with these records. And Jesus says, Nephi, bring me the records. And so Nephi brings the records to Jesus and Jesus looks through them and he says, you're missing some prophecies that Samuel the Lamanite wrote. And you're missing when you wrote about how they were fulfilled. Like you didn't write about how they were fulfilled. I need you to fix this. And Nephi says, okay. And he fixes it. <laughs> um, and then Jesus talks to those 12 disciples and he says, teach all the other people 
what I just taught you. Now chapter 24, now we're getting to Malachi and this is where Jesus says, add these words of Malachi to your records. You need to have these. And he quotes part of chapter three, actually I think it's all of chapter three of Malachi, Malachi chapter three, which Malachi is a short book in the Old Testament too. You could read the whole thing if you want. Um, but chapter three of Malachi talks about the restoration of the gospel, tithing and the blessings that come with paying tithing, and also how God will judge his servants based on their righteous service. And then in chapter 25, Jesus will quote all of Malachi chapter 4, which as you start reading it, you'll be like, mm, I probably could quote all of those too. This is the one where Malachi is prophesying, prophesying that Elijah will come and turn the hearts of the father to the children and the hearts of the children to the fathers, basically reminding us that the sealing power is what binds us all together and that when we turn our hearts to generations before and generations to come after us, that's where true power lies. Love it. And our final chapter this week, chapter 26, it's now back to Christ, um, just like his own words, and he starts to prophesy about the future. And then all of a sudden we get this interruption from Mormon, because remember, Mormon is the one actually writing all these words. Mormon is taking Nephi's records of what happened when Jesus was there, and Mormon is summarizing them, abridging them. This is about 400 years in the future. And Mormon says, uh, I was about to write what Jesus prophesied about, but the Lord just told me no. He said, do not include those prophecies. I need to try the faith of my people. And then we kind of get this really fast summary from Mormon where he's like, and then Jesus taught a lot more and he ministered to a lot of people. He healed a bunch more people. He ascended back into heaven. He visited them again often. And every time he came, he would administer the sacrament and the disciples were super righteous and obedient. And they went and preached and baptized a lot of people. We kind of get this sense where Mormons like, all right, we're not getting this like play by play. Here's what happened on this day. Here's what happened on this day. This is the end of our description of what Jesus did with the general public. Next week, we'll get the last interactions with mortal Jesus here on the earth. Um, but this is kind of the end here. And Mormon is just kind of giving us that overview summary of like, and he did basically the same thing a lot more. Um, but I love kind of reading the end of that. And that's where we're at. That's where we're at for this week. So look forward to next week where we get the last glimpse of what Jesus did. And then things start to speed up like crazy for the final few weeks, basically, months and weeks of this year as we're finishing up the Book of Mormon. All right, I hope you have a great week diving into these verses. Do not be afraid from Isaiah or Malachi. Trust me, this is an easy reading section and you're going to be like, oh yeah, yeah, I get this, I get this. And some of the chapters are pretty short too. Um, I think my personal focus question is I cannot shy away from Mormon saying that Jesus told him, don't write that they need to have their faith tried. And man, don't we want to be like, no, just tell us the answer. What is this? Um, but I want to reflect a little bit. What are the times in my life where I have felt like my faith was tried? Like tried meaning tested or challenged. Like when were those moments where I'm like, what do I really believe? Do I actually believe that? Wait, what about this? And when I reflect on those, those truly, truly, have strengthened my faith in the long term. Looking back, I can see that now and I can say, oh, oh, that totally strengthened my testimony of the Book of Mormon because I had this question or this issue or I had this challenge to it. And so I think sometimes giving that perspective can help me feel a little more confident moving forward, knowing that my faith will be tried. And that's what God wants. He doesn't want it to be easy for us because he knows what we need to do in order to become more like him. Okay, have a great week this week studying the words of Jesus Christ, and happy studying.